everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. I got my friend Sean Gaylord here today. And uh, Sean is, we were just talking and I was just having a good laugh. And um, we're going to talk some education stuff. We're going to talk some pop culture stuff. Sean is someone that every time I see anything that he posts online, he cheers me up. And this morning, I actually, uh, in planning for the podcast, because Sean's such a big music fan, uh, I just was looking up certain playlists and looking up um, certain things. And, and it's one of the things I, I just love about people uh, that talk about music. It actually reminds you of how much you love music and then you go listen to more music. And so um, just really excited to talk to him today. And we're gonna talk about uh, some of the work that he's doing. I said, like I said, some of the pop culture stuff uh, I wanna talk about. I was just, we were just having a great conversation that uh, I wish we could have captured. Maybe we'll get it back in the podcast, but. Sean, thank you so much uh, for taking time out of your day. I know uh, it's Monday, we're recording this, and mm -hmm. I, I know there's a million things you gotta do. So Sean, can you just introduce yourself and tell a little bit about kind of what you do in education? Well, George, thanks for having me on, man. And uh, I will we'll make a Cobra Kai reference for those of you playing at home. I'm asked, we're, we're talking Cobra Kai, don't worry about it. We're, we're going to make a Cobra Kai, Beatles, ACC basketball yeah. reference. Somehow it's going to happen. Um, but uh, but again, thanks for having me on. And just just an honor honor. You know, I'm I'm, I'm one of your one of your fans, and and you're one of my inspirations. And 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 in many ways, uh, you are my edu Beatles. And and <laughs> and, and, and <laughs> so so it, it's I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna be like Chris Farley to Paul McCartney and go and go. Remember that time in Innovator's Mindset on page 37? <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> yeah, I love that. That was awesome. That was awesome. <laughs> See, look at this. You know, people are like, what, what's, what's, wait, I, th I thought this was a Celebrate Monday guy and the Innovator's Mindset guy. What's, where's this Chris Farley we're, McCartney we're, stuff? We're, what we're happened? We're getting to that. We're getting to that. Sure, but, talk uh, about like what you do in education too, Sean. Oh, that, oh, that, that little detail. Um, well, I, I am a proud uh, principal. Uh, this is year 28 for me in, in education, and I am an elementary school principal in Winston-Salem, North Carolina at Moore Magnet Elementary School, K through five. And uh, I, this is my fourth school as principal. So I've been doing the principal thing for, you know, kind of about 12 years or so. Uh, and and before that, uh, by trade as 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 a teacher, because I, I still very much put myself in that category, I was a high school English teacher. So I taught literature and a little bit of film, a little bit of debate and and and, and history. So that's that's my teaching uh, teaching background. And I, I the, the way I kind of frame the principal gig is is I get to be the sidekick, if you will. Uh, the the, uh, the 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 Robin to a whole lot of uh, folks in the Justice League, a lot of Wonder Women, Superman, Batman, Aquaman, Black Panthers. I I crossed into Marvel there too, so I I'm very much the sidekick to a lot of great great teacher heroes serving kids. So how how was the transition? You said like you said you're you're doing elementary now, but you were a high school teacher, right? So like how was that transition? Like I actually worked. K-12, like it worked all of it. And mm -hmm. I remember saying like, I swear I will never work with, you know, this age group and then work with that group. And it's like, oh, this is amazing, right? Like I was surprised, but um, like how, like how was that transition for you kind of working at the high school level then going to elementary administrator? Well, the, 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 the good thing is the big, I, I didn't go all the way into 28 years. So I, I spent some time teaching fifth grade. Yeah. Uh, which helped, um, but the bulk of my career is, is is high school. So the way the way I kind of look at it is, the needs are different, right? Developmentally speaking and emotionally uh, speaking, but but the mission and the vision and the service is the same. You just you just kind of have to differentiate that, you know. And 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 sometimes that's hard, and sometimes that's that's easy. Um, but but at the end of the day, you know, I'm I'm serving kids, I'm serving teachers, I'm serving families. So uh, it, it, that takes on all kinds of levels. Um, but that that's kind of how I I, I I get through that. Um, but there's some challenges with it. 
Yeah, well, I found one of the challenges was the jokes that I could tell. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, we're elementary kids. I, all I had to do was be tall, and that was, like, amazing for yeah. some of them, right? So, like, I remember, you know, some of those jokes I could tell. I'm like, hey, high school kids don't find this funny, so I might have to get some new material. <laughs> yeah, you get totally, and, and and you can't be abstract either. So, I mean, and, and, age, and age appropriate. Absolutely. Well. Yeah, no, they um, – I, I love I love kind of the the transition. Like actually, when I was a uh, uh, vice principal, it was a K to nine school, and there was um, like a, a lot of mixture in my days. I remember actually there was uh, a kindergarten student got in some trouble, and it was pretty rare that a kindergarten child would ever be sent to the office for like fighting or anything like that. And I had to like get the secretary because they were like crying like oh dude i couldn't understand a thing they were saying and i'm like can you what is this kid saying to me right now and they were just so flabbergasted i'm like i need a second opinion here and it was just uh and then you deal with you know something grade eight grade nine kids is totally different i was just like i i absolutely love the variance of that day and really getting you know some of the older kids to work with the younger kids and um that that's something that's really powerful and you know i miss that work quite a bit but you were when we were talking before uh, you know, before we go on the podcast, you were talking about some of the like the you were, you gave a really good analogy about some of the struggles that you're having right now dealing with kind of COVID as a leader and some of the other accountability stuff that you're talking about. Can you talk about that for the, for the group? Yeah. So you know, uh, I, I'm at the end of the day, I have to count my blessings. You know, and 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 there are many things I'm grateful for, but there are many challenges and and. You know, I, I, I kind of picture like these two and, and maybe three flaming balls that that are, you know, kind of floating around. So you got the COVID-19 flaming ball and, and all of the, the unfortunate and sad realities that, that are that are going, you know, that go with that. You know, pe- people are suffering, people are struggling. Um, there, there are, there are safety guidelines. There, there are things that, that you kind of have to do to prepare for the safe return of, of students and families. And that's kind of where we are in, 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 in my district. And that is in many ways, you know, causing, you know, some, in some cases, much needed changes and in some other cases, some, some painful changes. Mm-hmm. The other flaming ball that you've got is is the you know school's not going away. So so even though we are remote, even though we may be in a hybrid situation, the st- standards are still there, the expectations are still there. There's there's still accountability that that's that's there, and it's and it's very very easy as a leader to get caught up in juggling both those balls, you know, and I have good days and bad days with it. And I have frustrations with it. Um, but one thing that, that we kind of remind ourselves on our, our team and our, our schoolhouse is that kids are at the center. Kids are at the heart of, of, of what we do. And, and, and we've got to maintain that focus. And we've got to keep that in mind that at the end of the day, we are here, we are there. We are everywhere. Beatles reference for, <laughs> For our kids, you know, and 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 they are they are at that why, and and if we can reconcile, and 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 address both those those kind of flaming balls in this analogy, and keeping that in the center, um, can't go wrong, mm-hmm. um, and and no one can argue with that. Yeah, and I think I think that for me, because I like I agree with you the importance of keeping the students the center and how important that is, and I think one of the shifts. That I really focus on is the is the language and maybe even a little bit the focus is that a lot of times it's like hey we're gonna focus on like it's all about doing what's best for kids and how important that is and sometimes it's at um, the detriment to a lot of the adults right yeah and, yes. And, yes and and really if you're doing what's best for kids you have to take care of the adults who are closest to children right on i think a lot of people don't um realize that and i think you know we say like hey we're doing this for kids and like well like if if a a person can't like literally function in the day because you're doing this you're not actually doing what's best for kids you're you're saying the easy part and then making it impossible for people to do right so like how do you how do you kind of 
find that balance. Like, like how do you in this time ensure the adults are taken care of in pursuit of helping kids? Well, it, it, it's 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 funny. I was talking to to a teacher about this be, because the, the the other kind of flaming ball that's also being juggled here is is that adult SEL, that adult care. Because yeah, you're you're absolutely right. Hey, do do what's best for kids, but also at the expense of the nervous systems, right? Right. Of 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 the of the very folks that are serving our kids, so you got to be you got to be very careful and very much in tune tune with that. Um, you know, I was talking to a teacher about this and 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 how coming back into the building, it won't be the same. You know, there are all these guidelines and things. So, so what are those things that I can do as a leader? What can we do as 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 a team to provide that much needed support? Sometimes it's as simple. Uh, as a quick check-in, hey, how you doing? How are you? Um, second thing that we we kind of the two things that we do in our schoolhouse is is I do a weekly coffee, and it's it's open ended. We and and we purposefully, or at least I purposely don't talk about school stuff or deadlines or things like that. It's very informal. Uh, it, it's 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 almost it's almost in many ways kind of like a sitcom. I also think too the, the the other the other second thing that we do is is building solutions, and and really empowering teacher agency and teacher voice and 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 that's hard in a remote setting. So we we are assist we got a great assistant principal who has a session that she's created where it's just called solution building. Bring 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 your solutions, bring your ideas to to the table. Mm -hmm. um, there's a, you know, and then, and then, and then, of, you know, and then of course, uh, I, I'm, I'm a big note writer, you know, I'm kind of like Jimmy Fallon with the thank you notes. So I, I, I believe in the power of a handwritten note, uh, or in this case, a, a, a power of, of a, just a quick email. Hey, thanks, George. I saw, saw you doing great things today. I appreciate mm -hmm. you. I'm here for you. Um, it's those simple, simple things. I mean, let, let's face it, man. I mean, we're all, we're all like, uh, Bruce Willis and Die Hard right now. <laughs> You know, and you know, I mean, is that, a, is that a Christmas movie? It is a Christmas movie, very much so. But right. but but it's also it's also kind of in a way, uh, you know, kind of what we're going through as educators. I mean, here's Bruce Willis, his character. And I'm not, I won't ruin the movie for those of you who haven't seen it. You know, it's only it was only it's only been thirty years, but but I mean, here's a guy that has these impossible circumstances and everything that that he needs is taken away from him and he's got to kind of figure figure it out without shoes he doesn't you know he's a cop he's trying to take out these terrorists in the building so he has to kind of rely upon uh, the you know the, the 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 cop on the on the ground there so and and rethink and his approach to saving the day and 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 very much so in this in, in this world that we're in we're all having to kind of rethink or or remix if you will remix leadership Remix teaching, remix support, re, re, remix how, how we evaluate and, and, and observe and, and, and keep, keep the business, if you will, the world of the schoolhouse going. It all has to be remixed. There's great fear in that. There's great joy in that as well. Um, and it's important for leaders to, to kind of maintain that mindset as well, like it's it's not the same. I, I you know, I can't have a faculty the way I want it, you know. So a uh, lot, lot of remixing going on in education. Well, it's interesting, Sean, as I'm like listening to you and the, I, I think you and I kind of have kindred spirits in the sense that uh, we're both known as pretty positive people. Mm -hmm. And I think we've both been criticized for being positive sometimes. Yes, right? yes. <laughs> And I think the the idea behind that is both of us right now are talking about some of the issues that you have. And there's, I can't remember the quote exactly, is from like a Mark and Angel blog. And it's it's that being positive is not about pretending negative things don't exist. It's about finding solutions to those things. Right. And ultimately, at the end of the day, right, it is addressing these things and then finding a solution. Like, it's actually quite easy just to complain and say things are bad and, and like point out all the problems, but that doesn't get you anywhere. It's like, what, what are we going to do to solve this? Like, what's the solution? And I love how you right. talked about really empowering, you know, the, the idea of like 
bringing teachers in and having that solution focused day and and like thinking about that um that's something i appreciate about you it's not about ignoring reality it's about creating a better one right a better version of that and that is addressing some of these problems and finding solutions to help people move forward and one of the things that you're known for and uh I, I really appreciate is the idea of celebrate Mondays. Can you just kind of talk about what that is, how it came to be? Well, th thank you. I, I appreciate that, man. Um, celebrate Monday. It, it really came from, I, I, and every time I mention this, I, I, I would, I, I always mention Todd Whitaker. Um, so, you know, somebody who also I put kind of in that, in that edu Beatles category for me. So you, you're probably, <laughs> You know, maybe you're the George Harrison of his Paul McCartney. You gotta, you gotta be, be the George, George man. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I was reading uh, his, his, this was, gosh, going on five, six years ago, maybe, maybe a little bit longer, uh, reading one of his, uh, one of his books, School Culture Reimagined. And uh, I remember coming across a blurb in the book, and I was in my feelings. You know, again, I, 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 I'm a positive person, but, but, but I hurt, I cry, I moan. I, and I was in one of my feelings, uh, one of these days, it was a snow day in, in North Carolina, the kind of day that, that you folks in Canada would laugh at, like what, that's, one that's inch, <laughs> one inch. That Is that last, all? There's... That was the last one, six years ago. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So yeah. I was sitting there at home and I'm reading this book and I'm in my feelings and and uh, the blurb in the book, or there was a quote like, you can bust a culture if you, if you celebrate Monday. And mm -hmm. I just thought, wow, what, what, a, what an ingenious idea. I was in my first principalship. I was looking for ways to, to kind of build an identity and, and, and build a culture for our school. So I thought, why don't we celebrate Monday? Monday is, is the kind of day that we use as an excuse to be be negative. So I, I, hey, hey, hi, how you feeling, George? It's Monday. Yeah, my, yeah, this day right. sucks. You know, I'm, uh, and then we use that as an excuse to take that either out on our colleagues or our kids. So I thought, you know, why don't why don't we create a a, a hashtag and 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 maybe maybe what I'll do is is I'll I'll put those two words together for the faculty hashtag celebrate Monday and I'll say you know what I'm going to tweet out just positive things. That are happening in our schoolhouse and and i'm going to do it on monday and and then it just it, it was really just going to be a social experiment just kind of a faculty experiment and and then i noticed through the power of twitter other people were kind of picking up on it and and so instead of it just kind of being a a twitter thing i i used celebrate monday as as, as kind of a a way to embrace new possibilities mm -hmm to embrace what is what is positive and to, and to kick the week off on a positive note because in many ways and and and, and maybe maybe always in some cases we are the best part of a child's day right we are the best part of a colleague's day so you know i have many colleagues in, in the schools i've served that call the fact the faculty family because some of our colleagues don't have a, a, that, that family unit and they rely upon the schoolhouse. Same thing for our kids. You know, they, some of the kids that I serve go home to very horrific circumstances. I couldn't last 60 seconds in their skin. But, but coming, coming to, I was going to say coming home, but, but coming to our schoolhouse in many ways for our kids is like coming home. So I felt what, instead of instead of using Monday as 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 an excuse to be negative or to be grouchy or or all right I'm going to give you guys you know this homework or I as a principal you know what this faculty meeting is going to be three hours long um, you know it it I, I kind of took a page from the Don Draper Mad Men book if you, if you don't like what's being said change the conversation right. so that's what Celebrate Monday is 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 it's a way to change the conversation to to uplift and, and to uphold the, the why and the core of the schoolhouse. Now, I also get a lot of grief sometimes, well, why not celebrate Tuesday? Why not celebrate Wednesday, right. you know, celebrate Friday? Of course, you know, I mean, it's not like, let's be positive one day out of the week and, and then the rest of, re rest of the days, let's all be, you know, uh, 
cruel and mean and, and spiteful. Right. <laughs> but, 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 but again, I mean, think, think about it, man. Friday, you know, we're, we're all, you know, we're, we're either playing that song by Loverboy, right? Everybody's working for the weekend. We're playing that Todd Rundgren song, bang on the drum all day on a Friday. Why, why does Friday have to be that day that we finally get happy and then we go? Right. How about Monday be that day to, to be that, man, I can't wait. I get to do this. I get to change the world. I, I get to be in a, a, a book study on innovators mindset. I, I get to have a conversation with, with, with my friend George to, to, today. You know, I, I may have had a bad, bad meeting or a bad crucial conversation, but it's again, it's finding those positives on the first day of the week to set the tone. Or, or lead up to that crescendo to Friday. So that, that's yeah. the move to celebrate Monday. Yeah, and I think that, like, that exactly what you said about setting the tone. Like, the, the first thing that I do every morning is I actually work out every morning. I stay nice. off email, stay off social media. I saw that you were on your elliptical this morning, I think. Right? Every morning, man. Yeah, I'm there. And, and it, it's not that every hour, like, is less important than those hours. It's about yes. how that sets the tone for my day because I know that I'm much more positive, I'm much easier to deal mm -hmm. with. And it's not like I don't look forward to sleeping. Like I'm excited when I get to go to bed. Yeah. I'm at that age where I'm like, yes, it's like, it's time, right? And I think the other misconception is like, oh, like we should only celebrate when we're at work. And it's not that at all. Like we really need to appreciate that time we get away from school, that time mm -hmm. that we have, you know, um, with our family and just to like kind of get away. I think that's important. But like, as you said, these kids, you know, if we're talking about how excited we are to be away from them and that's their most excited thing, there's a disconnect there. So I think it's finding the balance of, appreciating all of those moments and I think kind of rearranging and for me like one of the shifts and I wrote about this I can't remember where I read it, it was kind of moving from like uh, I have to to I get to like I get yes. to go to work today like I, I get this opportunity that you know other people don't have right like I get to do these certain things and so I really appreciate that because I think um, you do such a great job. And like I said, it's not about you're ignoring negative things or ignoring some of the, you know, or pretending like we shouldn't be excited about the weekend either, but it's how do we set that tone? Uh, and speaking of tone, uh, one of the things I really, lo I love reading your Facebook because uh, you always remind me of like music I love or a movie I yeah. want to see. Um, one of the movies you talked about and I don't know if you remember this, was uh, Love and Mercy. Oh, so, yeah. I actually, you know, so Pet Sounds, Pet Sounds, I didn't even know about Pet Sounds. I didn't know about that until that movie. And yeah, man. Masterpiece. It is really good. It, it is. It's weird, too. Like, it's, it's, a, it's a different album. But watching that movie and seeing like how someone create is it's incredible that's such a paul dano the guy who plays the young brian wilson he's one of my favorite actors and he doesn't do that many movies it's like kind of weird yeah uh, he's fan he's fantastic but um i want to talk to you about the pepper effect i grew up uh as a kid in the 80s and i my walls were plastered with beatles posters and I used to get like the Beatles, like 1960 to like 65 tape, right? Cassette. I don't know if you remember them. Like it was like they they were just mixed into years, right? Yep. And so you wrote the Pepper Effect, and and you talk about the Beatles. You talk about education. Tell us about that book. Well, I you know you you just dropped Love and Mercy, Brian Wilson. So I yeah. I that that and I remember I think we we direct messaged about that film. Yep. So I I. I tell you, if if you want to see a musical version, I'm going to go out here on a limb, but if you want to see like the innovator's mindset set to music, it would be that film and it would be, you know, Pet Sounds and, and Paul Dano, man. I mean, just he, he's he's worth the price of admission. Yeah, he's amazing. Um, he is amazing. So and, and the thing about Pet Sounds by, by the Beach Boys is is that album came actually as kind of a direct response from from the beatles you yeah. know the sergeant pepper right rubber soul actually um oh, okay yeah the brian wilson had heard rubber soul and and uh and then decided uh, the beatles have made the greatest album of all time we're, yeah. we're gonna do something so that's where pet sounds came 
Paul McCartney heard heard um, Pet Sounds and went to the rest of the band and said, oh my gosh, they've made the greatest album of all time. What are we going to do? So they do Sgt. Pepper. And and when we talk about Sgt. Pepper, you know, as 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 the, the Beatles, we, we put that in there as like, you know, it's mentioned in the same breath as like David's statue or 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 the Mona Lisa, you know, these kind of iconic masterpieces, you know, per, per, perhaps and, and, you know, we talk about in, in, in industry like this. This was, you know, um, Steve Jobs, Sergeant Sergeant Pepper was the Macintosh. And, and, and so I thought. Why don't we have that in education? Why? What, what is you know what is our Sergeant Pepper moment? You know we talk about a Sputnik moment, right? You know, and that you know, but 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 why why don't we put artistry and 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 this kind of masterpiece thinking in in the same regard as education? So that that's where kind of the Pepper effect comes into play. So I, I, I basically take the story of Sergeant Pepper, take the story of the Beatles, and, and, and I kind of break it down to what I, what, what I call the four riffs of the Pepper effect. Um, believe in your vision. You know, if, if, and, 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 and we talked a little bit about that before our, 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 our time on this, is it's important to have that, that, that vision and be true to your core. Um, so believe in your vision, believe in your masterpiece, Believe that what you're doing is is la is going to last. Strive for it to last. Strive for it to be timeless and, and and universal and and good. Believe in your collaborators. Believe in those folks that 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 you're working with. Uh, you know the Beatles uh, in in recording Sgt. Pepper. As you know, they stopped touring, and and you know a lot of people in the press were why, why have they stopped touring? You know, this is before the age of YouTube and and right. iTunes and. Right where touring was your main bread and butter and and the Beatles um you know got all kinds of uh hits in the in in the British press and, and Paul McCartney famously said yeah we were we were reading those those articles and 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 while we've been we were quoting Sergeant Pepper it's my Paul McCartney impression it's horrible I should stop I should really stop every everyone in, in Britain is like to, you know, turning this off right now, you know so I, I don't want you to lose you sound like the lose. Simpsons version of Paul McCartney <laughs> <laughs> nice so was, that that was kind of nice kinda nice exciting. fellow yes very nice i like i like that <laughs> reference there it's at least in the sky with diamonds but anyway um where was it so anyway the, the beatles the beatles are reading this article and and paul's like you just wait you know we, you know and, and 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 to me he's believing in his band he's believing in his team you know even though they've got this adversity so believe in your collaborators and then the fourth one which we kind of touched upon, and 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 I, you you write it so beautifully in, in innovators' mindset, and 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 in your work is ignore those naysayers. Mm -hmm. Don't don't let those naysayers dictate, you know, your masterpiece or or in, in, inhibit you. So so that in essence is the Pepper effect, and taking those kind of stories from the making of that album, and 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 kind of cross referencing and cross walking, if you will. To some of the things that 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 you can do in 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 the uh, in the schoolhouse. I mean, I'm known as the Celebrate Monday guy, and right. you know if that if that's my Sergeant Pepper moment, if that if that's what I'm if that's what they're going to put on the tombstone, or if you know when they're talking about well, what is his Sergeant Pepper moment, um, Celebrate Monday. You know, innovators mindset. You know. You know, I'm. You know, I. You know, that's your. You know, you know. I know you've got more great things, but you know, right now that's right. your that's your Sergeant Pepper moment. You know, so. Why, why can't educators have that same kind of iconic elevated status when it comes to the good and noble work that we're doing in education? Yeah, that, I think that, like, like, I think that idea of artistry, right? Like that's something I've really explored in education and it's, mm -hmm. it's understanding that there is no perfection. It's just progress, right? Like it's just, it, it's continuously figuring out like, better ways you could teach and learn and looking at right. that and you know advancing your craft and um like when i when i present um when i do a keynote and how i put my slides together how i put the stories yes. together i see that as art i see that as yes. artwork right and i think that there's a lot of connection obviously uh you know teaching a classroom to doing a keynote are two different uh skills but there is artwork and you know how you put that together how you get kids to like 
go beyond learning something, but feeling something. So they really are immersing themselves uh, in that process. And I think that's important. I think the other element that you talked about, um, the idea of the naysayers is something that for me, um, I, I think about this, like I actually think like warranted criticism is, is great, right? Mm -hmm. But I also, I remember this one, um, this uh, Joe Sanfilippo and I were having a conversation and he said, you know, his wife told him never take criticism from somebody you wouldn't take advice from. And that, that always has resonated with me. And that idea is that when like, if, 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 if like there, I, I, and I have really been thoughtful of this too, because I, I know, I think I was quite bad is that the only time I would like comment on someone's blog was when I disagreed with something. So like all of a sudden, the only time that I'm having a conversation with this person is to tell them I don't like what they wrote or I have an issue with something that they wrote. And then, and then thinking about like, if that was a kid, like how far would I get with that kid? And yeah. you know, those, those really good teaching skills, like we're all educators. It's like, it's okay to do that. But I, I also need, I like, yeah, like I appreciate the criticism, but I don't even know if you got my back. I don't know if you're doing it to like push me down or to lift me yeah. up because I think that's a really important aspect. If I don't think you're lifting me up, I have no time for you. None. I know that might, that might seem harsh to say that, but I have to, I have kids. I have, you know, I have a family that I have to take care of and I am very thoughtful of my energy and, and what, <laughs> I allow it to kind of like seep into my day. And, you know, I have, um, I have, a, you know, brothers in education who has no issue criticizing me, but I also know, like, he'll criticize me all the time. He'll never give me a compliment. But at the end of the day, if I needed him, he'd always have my back. So I'm okay with, you know, what he shares uh, to do. I think that's, um, that's really important. And I appreciate you sharing that. So I'm going to ask you this. I'm going to ask you a couple questions here. Bring it on. Sergeant Peppers or Pet Sounds? Which Ooh. I know you're Beatles fans. But is, is it like, is it close? Like, you know, I take, I, I'm a huge Beatles fan. I'm taking Pet Sounds over Sergeant Peppers. Like, Sergeant Pepper is not, I don't like that. I'm not a huge fan of that album. Yeah, it's, you know, I, I, I would say when I first, and we, 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 were, we were talking about this earlier, how like when you, when you first hear a work, right. you don't get it. And, and Pet Sounds, I mean, I, I, I listened to Pet Sounds for the first time as an album. Yeah. When I was 16 years old. Yeah. And, and I didn't get it. Yeah. And, and I didn't see what the big deal was. And, and then the older, the older I get, the more I have an appreciation for that. So I, I would say in terms of, in, in terms of depth, I, I'm, I'm, gosh, man, I, I'll, I love Pet Sounds. <laughs> But, I am, so I think I'm biased towards Pet Sounds because of that movie. So yeah. that movie brought it home for me. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, man. And 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 because you see all, all yes. of those elements, you know, like yeah. when he when he says, what, "What's that line?" When 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 Carol K, the bass player, says, "Brian, this note, this note's wrong. It's a mistake." And he goes, "No, it's it's not a mistake if you keep doing it every you know four <laughs> bars or whatever it is, right. you know." Um, you know, man, I, I, I Pepper Pepper has got me through. It, I mean, that's my love. That's my band, right. man. So I, 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 I will say Pepper. I'll take but, it. But I love Pet Sounds. Okay, so here. Okay, here's another question: The Beatles are they a boy band? <laughs> wow. Well, okay. In in the Backstreet <laughs> Boys '98 six oeuvre, you know. Yeah. You know, in, in terms of pop and in terms of, of, of what they are in that hard day's yeah. night era, I would say absolutely. Absolutely. You know, choreography and like they bow together and head. they shake their head and, and, yeah. the, and the uniforms. But 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 they they shed that skin, you know, at some point, you know, they 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 kind of rebelled against that. So, you know, I, I, I tell you, the closest approximation of that is what Harry Styles is doing right now. Yeah. So, you know, he was this one direction, you know, kind of boy band guy. And what I really dig about him, in fact, my daughter was was playing some of his, his more recent music to me. Yeah. I really appreciate the fact that 
he's pushing against the grain. He's trying to re, re, reinvent himself and, and, and follow his own muse. So, so, um, yeah, man, I, I put, I put the Beatles as a boy band, but it's, they're a boy band that grew up. Um, right. But, you know, and, yeah, and, and a lot of these boy bands, you know, again, new kids, like those Justin guys. Justin Timberlake. Justin Timberlake another, is another good example of that. Yeah, man. I mean. Okay. Yeah. Good. good. This, so this, this is, is good. So building on this, I've never done this with anyone on the podcast, but I wanted to oh, do it today. Bring so, it. So this is, I'm putting you on the spot. And because you're from North Carolina and you have, there's like a lot of basketball stuff. We know like, uh, you know, the NCAA tournament you got. So we're going to do the Elite Eight. So I got the lead eight. So I actually wow. listened to a playlist of boy bands and like probably the biggest boy band in the world. I don't know any of their music is BTS. Same and here, man. I know I nothing know about. So they are not in this and I'm sure like I, I just, they're just not on this, but I had a playlist this morning that I was listening to based on that we were going to talk and i said okay you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna do an elite eight with sean and he's gonna pick the ultimate winner of the boy bands okay so bring it these are these are random these are random based on when they played on my playlist this morning okay so jackson five or the backstreet boys jackson five okay okay next one well why would you even ask me that i mean come on man hey, Listen, there's they're seated. There there might be a seated here, okay? Eliminated uh, completely. Okay. It's gonna get hard. New kids on the block or the monkeys? The monkeys. Yeah? Okay. I am an unabashed fan of of the monkeys, and I consider them a very well, I mean, you could, that's a that's gonna be a tough semifinal for you. <laughs> bring it, man. Bring okay. it. In sync or one direction. Oh man. And you read uh, in one direction. Yeah, uh, no, you're trying to trip me up here. Uh, you know, it, I mean, come on, man. In sync. I mean, come hey, on. In sync. All right. Tell me why. <laughs> okay. So, new edition or take that? And I threw like a, there's like a, I don't know much of take that, but I know a couple of their songs. New edition yeah, or take that? I, I grew up with new edition, Robbie. Ricky, Bobby, Bobby, and Mike. Ricky, Mike. Okay. I like a girl. I mean, come on, Mr. Telephone Man. Yeah, that's okay. come on. new. So, new edition is your pick. Yes. Okay. And please, in the in the comments on YouTube, you can pick your ultimate winner of this list as well. <laughs> so, this is going to be a super. This is like, this is a semifinal that you're like, why did they seed it this way, right? Because of based on your comments. So, you got to pick one: Jackson Five or the Monkeys. Ooh. ooh. <laughs> man the next one's gonna be like the wake forest <laughs> i know man yeah i, I again i i i'm a i'm a bigger monkeys fan than i am um okay. i am j5 so, sorry tito and marlon and jermaine i'm okay. so sorry okay so in sync new edition and the other semifinal new edition without a doubt okay so i already know but monkeys, new edition in the final. Who are you picking? Man. <laughs> you know, oh, much work. You know, you got to pick. I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go the, there. The, and the, I'm gonna the show you the the two people listening still. The two <laughs> people who what did you pick? Um, I, I'm just gonna go there and and. There, there they are. There you go. The monkeys. <laughs> the monkeys. There they are. Win. Okay. There they are. I'm going to tell you. What why, about you, man? Why I'd pick New Edition. And I'm not talking out of those two. I'm talking New Edition would win the whole thing for me. Because, wow. first of all, I love New Edition was like probably my first candy girl is probably yeah. one of my favorites. I, I cannot not smile when candy girl plays and Thank i like you. love all their songs but then you get out of new edition you get ralph tresvent bobby brown uh i think it, is it johnny gill is one too john, john, johnny gill was the like the later member yeah, yeah. bell biv devoe right oh. then you get abc right another bad creation which Ooh. is right then Ooh. you also get boys to men 
And it's all like this lineage of new edition. So they, they, they are like Belle Biv DeVoe. I can't remember what the album was, but Belle Biv DeVoe, the Poison album is like, I know that back inside out. So like somehow, somehow like from, you know, I can't remember when, Can when Candy Girl came out until like Boys the Men, there's like something to do with new edition that entire time. Like I well, love I love Candy Girl is probably one of my favorite songs ever. I, I'm a big fan of of Mr. Telephone Man. You know, uh, I just you, you know, and then I love that era where like we're like uh, New Edition said we're all grown up now. You, you remember that when when they when they went their separate ways and then they got back together yes. and, and and it's like we're we're men now. And and uh, but I gotta tell you, man, you know I know we we're all over the place, but but if you think about the monkeys <laughs> and you think about what's come out of out of that 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 swamp so so michael nesmith you know his mother betty nesmith invented liquid paper michael really? nesmith yeah she she's she's responsible for that talk about an talk about innovator's mindset <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> hey so are the monkeys okay i don't know i don't know enough about the monkeys it was just one of my songs on the playlist are they like a band that was made for a tv yeah show? and th and then and then they became a band so so they they started off as a as a response to hard day's night like they were going to be the american television nice. answer to that and 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 they you know were basically a manufactured you know image and okay, then they so, became a real band. Speaking of, okay, speaking of boy bands, I cannot remember this. I want to see if you know this. Did you ever see that there was like a, it was like on, it was like on Much Music Here, which is like Canada's MTV. And it was nice. like a boy band show. And oh, I cannot remember it. But, oh. it, and they sing, uh, I know my calculus. It takes you plus me equals us. Do you know? <laughs> so, like, do you know that show? Do you have any idea? I I I, I don't know that show. I, I mean, you know, my my uh, my my Canadian television, you know, references, you know, outside of you know, you can't do that on television and silk stockings and. Oh, um, okay, what, I read, so I I googled it. It's it's they're called together, like two the number two. two. We're gonna <laughs> hang two. Never heard of it. You and me. That's it, it was on for like the shortest time. And they had like the one thing I only person I remember was actually Chris Farley's brother was like the old guy. <laughs> he was oh like the, he was the old guy in the boy band, right? Because you had to have like an old guy, like a Joey Fatone. And so like Exactly. <laughs> Joey Fatone. Uh, I, I actually I love that show and they took it off the air. I was like, what? That show is great. So um, I, I am not vouching for that show because I can't remember if it's appropriate or not. Yeah. We be careful. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> I don't, I can't, I'm just saying as a kid, like that was, it's funny because it was like a total, it was not like the monkeys where it was like serious. It was like, it was totally a joke. Right. Nice. But, it, but it was like, the songs were super catchy and I would listen all the time. Okay, this is the last thing I'm going to talk to you. I know we haven't talked about education, but honestly, I love just having... This is fun, man. I'm enjoying this. Yeah, this is great. Oh, okay, Cobra Kai. Tell me why. Tell people why. And I love Cobra Kai. Why should people watch Cobra Kai? Tell them what Cobra Kai is. Cobra Kai, for those of you who uh, don't know, uh, is, is the... What was the evil dojo first portrayed... <laughs> in the karate kid trilogy and and it basically cobra kai is a is what is it 36 years i forget what it was george but it's it's a 30 year kind of sequel in the aftermath of 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 that 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 great battle between uh ralph macchio's character yeah. uh daniel and yeah. and uh and and johnny who is the the kind of the main bully and and cobra kai basically it's these guys older uh, reinventing themselves and and re reigniting their rivalry. It is it is eighties cheese. Uh, there there is there is a there is a little bit of hero's journey, if you will. Uh, great musical reference. Uh, you know the part I'm talking. I love the yeah. Ario Speedwagon uh, reference uh, that's in there. But uh, it's um, 
you know, in many ways, uh, you know, it's it's kind of a uh, a depiction. I mean, we could talk about the Cobra Kai effect of leadership. <laughs> there you go. That's the next book, man. That is the next book, you know. So, uh, but no, I, I, I really, I, I appreciate all things '80s. That, that, that was a great decade. The, uh, the, know, the much. intentional cheesy songs they put into that show are amazing. Like, yes, it's like, the, it's like they're not. This is kind of a joke, but it's also awesome. Right? Yes, like, and, and, and they're and they're unabashed it. about it too. It's like yeah. you, you have to take it seriously there's there's no tongue in the cheek at all in any of this you know but uh I, i'm i'm dying for season three i know uh january 8th is the uh is the debut of that on netflix but man i uh and i i mean there's just so much there and, and again i know people yeah. may not have seen it all because we haven't even you know talked well again i don't want to i don't want to talk about other characters that reappear right, right. Uh, but there's one character that reappears that i <laughs> Not just talk about cheese, you know. Uh, it's awesome. Uh, he is awesome. I, I like. I don't want to. So I want to tell you this one part. So if you haven't seen it, you might want to skip ahead. Yeah. So his one friend that comes back, who ends up dying. Oh yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, this is the, I. I gave the spoiler alert, but you I want to share this with you, Sean, and see if you know this. Okay. So. His friend, he's older and he dies, right? And do you remember at the end of the scene, like he's in a body bag and they zip it up? Which is the line. But do you, do you, he is the guy in the original Cardi Kid that said, put him in a body bag. Body bag. And so, like that, like you, like, it's kind of interesting. Like just like little things to do that. The thing that I love about that show is it's like you, it's like there's no you don't know who the villain is like until yes. later, there's kind of a villain right yes but johnny and they actually do this really interesting thing and i i wonder where they wrote it is that there is this youtube video years ago that talked about how actually um daniel was the bad guy and johnny was the good guy and they yeah. actually they actually like do that theory and i'm like did they get that off that YouTube video? Like, is that like a little ode to the YouTube video? Because Johnny so. is like, he's he's such a he's such a jerk and lovable at the same time. Like, it's just kind of interesting how they kind of play his character. And he's like, it is to me. If you if, for all the Canadian people or Canadian listeners out there, um, Cobra Kai, and I was telling Sean this before, is Degrassi, the next generation with Karate Kid. It is Degrassi with Karate. That is I love exactly it. what it reminds you of. I love it, man. That's yeah. uh that that that's that's a that's a brilliant take, but but you're right, man. I mean, I I, I think ESPN did like a parody 30 30 on 30, 30 for 30 thing yeah. where 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 basically the the premise is is that D Daniel it was an illegal kick that that right. caused him to win and right. and but but you also see why Johnny, who, you know, as a kid, you know, I, I, I hated him, you know, I, I mean, right. I, I and, and don't even get me started on the whole Elizabeth Shue thing. I mean, I had a whole <laughs> boyhood crush. I mean, I, I'm right. still in love with her, you know, yeah. um, but, but how, you know, you see, you see why he is the way he is and you end up, you know, kind of cheering for him more so than Ralph Macchio's character. And they almost like sometimes you're making Ralph Macchio look like the villain. And it's just yes. kind of like they're it's just really it's it's real I love how they do that because it's not it's kind of, <laughs> I don't know if you watch this. It's kind of like when they went to like wrestling where it used to be like there's a there's bad guys and there's good guys. And then Stone Cold was a bad guy that everyone yes. loved. And they're like, hey, let's just actually we'll kind of just do stuff and you figure out kind of who you like it's not they did they make it where there's like nuance in the character which i find really fascinating so we should very totally similar do to like a podcast I love that. On like pop culture so we should man that'd be I'd fun to but, talk about this but it's yeah. like how hulk hogan became hollywood hulk hogan remember that because he was no longer hulk hogan right. he was like hollywood hulk hogan and right. he he was the bad guy you know and, and then he started was that in the nw or wcw when he went there that was when he went to the wcw right. yeah you know, I mean, you you could, I mean, you could also make an argument that you know, uh, you know, Rowdy Piper, you know, was was right. this 
you know, was this was the hero of the whole thing, you know. Um, my my favorite wrestler growing up was Macho Man, and he was a bad guy. I loved it. I, when he started turning good, I was like, no, 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 I like him. I like him as a bad guy. I like. I want him to stay bad, right? And then he went Randy back Savage. Like, yes, right? Yeah, he was. Yeah. He's probably one of my favorites. Anyways, this is going down a whole. whole Rick route. Flair, man. I mean, we're in North Carolina. This is the home of Rick yeah, Flair, yeah. man. So yeah. you know. <laughs> I, he, so actually, uh, I'm in. You're in Brett or Rick Flair country. I'm in Bret Hart country. <laughs> right. Yeah, Bret Hart. I, That's I've right. met Bret Hart several times. Yeah, he actually, as a kid, there is a, this is wow. a whole other thing. Stampede wrestling uh, was was like basically out of Calgary, so they would they would go to like little small. So I grew up in Humboldt, Saskatchewan. And I remember there was probably like I, I think I counted them. There was like 300 seats. And the and they played like they were in this. Right. They were doing wrestling. It was like a really like I'm not talking like a small venue. It was like a room they put a wrestling ring in. And so I remember them actually having to jump off the top rope, but also ducking because if you if you like put your head all the way up when you jumped off. Oh my god! And so like that's that's when I first started watching Bret Hart. He actually came to Humble Saskatchewan when I was a kid. And they, they came to my my parents' restaurant, like all the stampede wrestlers. So there's like wow. a whole a whole thing here. But like <laughs> this is just going this is just going so many places. You gotta put that in your next newsletter, man. I that, that I see <laughs> I see you taking that somehow and putting that in your next blog something, man. That that <laughs> you got to. Anyways, man. Hey, it's so awesome to talk to you. If people are <laughs> looking to you to talk about education. Or like all the pop culture stuff that we love talking about. Where can they find you? Two, two, two. Well, three, three places. Uh, you know, your your backyard. I mean, it's it's cold up here, man. Give me some Labatt's Blue. But anyway, uh, <laughs> is it, and is it is it true that they say Labatt's Blue is the coldest beer in the refrigerator in Canada? <laughs> I, I, I have no idea. I'm I am the, so not a beer guy at all. I, I've heard this, like, because like nobody drinks it. But anyway, there there goes your sponsorship. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, but well, there's two places that you can find me. Um, always on Twitter uh, at SM Gaylord. Uh, I'm always there. Tag me, yeah. and and I'm happy to converse. And then and then I do a little lemonade stand of a of a podcast called the Principal Liner Notes. And if you just Google that or go on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or Anchor and just do Principal Liner Notes podcast, uh, you 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 can you can find me there. So. Um, Happy to share and connect uh, anytime or, or talk pop culture, man. Yeah, and make sure that you you uh, share with Sean your your favorite boy band, whether they were in my elite eight or not, because I would love to see that conversation uh, take off. Because I love hearing that. But new addition for me, taking over the monkeys. But you, if you, it, I know if I would put the Beatles in there, they would have won. Oh, so they easily, easily, hands, 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 you, hands down. You. For you, they go to one. I don't know for me. Anyways, man, it was awesome talking to you. Hey, make sure you connect with Sean. I, I love having a chat with you. And, um, and you know, the idea of Celebrate Monday, what an awesome Monday to, to hang out and chat with you today. So I hope you have a good day. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Take care.